Pacific South. I've been pep up a little bit through the evening, bring a rain across the and South Wales and South West England, later in the night across East Anglia and the South East. It clears up. I don't turn the news off. Um, Google would be wanting to put ads on, fortunately. Right, um, one of the guys known as Aunt Bessie's Yorkshire Puddings, because he comes from Yorkshire, asked me to do a quick review on the FX Verminator first version. Uh, it's known as the takedown rifle. Um, the bottle will screw off at the back here, silence will come off, and there was a kind of briefcase that it came in that it would all fit into. However, um, I decided that um, it's a short rifle, a rifle bag would be uh, good enough, and so I got myself a UTG uh, bag that would take the scope. And in fact, it will take the scope, and this is the rifle that I use my uh, night sight on. Um, and there's the fitting attached to the top of my telescopic sight, which would hold the TV screen type thing for the night sight. So I'll just screw that down for the moment because this is not about night sight. Um, now then. This is the first version and it's supposed to have three settings on it and I'll just see if I can get it into focus there. Right, there, just above my finger, if I can just get it right, is a little button. You see it there? And the idea of that button is if you have it forward, it'll be six foot pounds in the middle, nine foot pounds to the back, as near to 12 foot pounds as is safe. However, on the first version of this gun, it wasn't really uh, recommended to use it after uh, people found out that it wore out the seals very quick. And the seals are connected to the area where the transfer port is. So, a very major problem when it came to having to mend it because it meant stripping the entire gun to bits and of course uh, if you're not a gunsmith this is a little bit on the complicated side to strip down so it costs you lots of money so it wasn't something that bothered me but if anybody's contemplating getting one of the earlier ones then I wouldn't get it for that um, not unless you really can strip down one of these guns and put it back together again and are prepared to do so on a regular basis. I've set mine at uh, the 12 foot pounds uh, setting which is on this one about 11.7 which is good. Um, as you can see it's quite a short rifle it's just slightly longer than some of my bull pups um, not too ever. I've got still got a bad shoulder and holding it in that arm the as you can see, I can raise it and lower it, and of course in two, with two, very nice, nice feel to it. The only thing is that when it came, that surprised me, because I'd seen these advertised by certain editors as being great guns out of the bag, um, was that when I put the scope onto the mount, onto the rail rather, with mounts and I used eye mounts I couldn't get my eye behind the scope perhaps it's because I've got a big fat head or something I don't know but I have and I couldn't get my head there and so the situation was that it was kind of like that looking over the top and the only way I could get my head behind the scope was to go like that no good at all so I had to get razor blocks to put on and then still use eye mounts so that my head sat comfortably behind the scope. Before anybody says anything about safety, this gun has no air in it. Um, I think a seal's gone at the front here which I need to look at but the air has emptied out completely. 
I can prove this by cock and fire. That's the empty sound. Very no noisy when it's empty. Um, this is a 200cc bottle at the back, fills with air, and then there's a smaller bottle at the front here, also fills with air. It gives you a good couple of hundred shots in 2.2. I don't know about the 177 version because I don't really like to use 177. It's got a magazine which is inset into here. This is removed by pulling this little lever back here and the cocking lever at the same time. It's an 8 shot magazine. It does come with two. I seem to have lost one at the moment which is rather bad because that's going to set me back a bob or two. So, slide the little lever in to hold the magazine in place and then it is cocked at that point. You have a safety there to stop it from firing which you can use or you can decock. Pull the trigger back and it's safe. So uh, nice little rifle in, in that respect. It's um, synthetic stock and cheek cover which is good in winter because it makes the gun warm, doesn't freeze your hands off. So if you forget your gloves um, you're not going to end up uh, putting your fingers too much holding on to this very warm stock and I have used this for hunting in winter. This is actually zeroed for 50 meters at the moment which is about the furthest I would shoot with this two two at 11 foot pounds um, and be confident of taking down my quarry. Um, what more is there I can say about this really? Uh, it's got an adjustable shoulder piece at the back here and there's a little screw in the top here that fastens this uh, to this uh, to the bottle which will actually raise that cheek piece a little bit if you needed to but or you can you can make it come back a little bit further I think it would be a little bit risky but you could do if you needed to but the whole point of having this type of rifle is it's small still powerful gets the distance and has a good amount of shots so you really wouldn't want to be extending it too much if you are contemplating getting one though if you're quite tall, uh, well not very tall, I'm 5'10 and a half but I seem to have an eye, neck and cheek line so that's what I need I could not manage with that I don't know, I just could not get the accuracy so perhaps it's just me but it's something to think about uh, definitely you need a silencer, without a silencer short barrel, very loud bang, you'd scare any quarry for miles uh, if you're using it on the firing range, shooting at targets, not down such like, still be noisy with people outside of you and you would probably be hurting their eardrums so um, diffuser wouldn't help much neither. Um, that's as much as I can say with this one really. It's a beautiful gun to use. Like I say I've used it for hunting and I've used it at the club. Uh, for target shooting, um, I've hit targets out to 75 metres on a reasonable day. Uh, and like I said, I wouldn't go beyond 50 metres, and it was a really windy day, then I wouldn't really be trying to get beyond 30 metres. Um, and I'm only talking about metres, I prefer to talk about feet and yards normally, but our range is set up for metres, so that's how I've had to zero it. Um, all in all, Nice little gun, well balanced. It's got a gauge on the bottom, just to prove the damn thing's empty. It fills up to 220, 220 bar before it hits the red mark, which is, uh, like I said, very good, gives you a good amount of shots. It's a good feel to it. This is, all this will move round side to side in case you need to have it in a different position and of course when I was shooting with the night sight on it um, night sight being a if you look in one of my videos you'll get to uh, see what the night sight's all about because I had one of the first ones and did one of the first reviews uh, well I think I did the first video review on the market actually 
as a big screen on top as a, a camera fits to the back which transmits the image from the scope to the screen so basically um, what I was doing was um, for instance when I went to the to a farm ratting um, I just parked up my van on the side door, sat in the back, balanced this on my knee and looked at the screen and just moved it like a, a gun turret type gun. Very easy. You're out in the field at night, you just look at your night sight screen, you don't put it up to your eye like that, you can hold it down there, which is very comfortable and easier to hold steady down there. And you just look at your little screen, get your crossers on and you've dispatched your uh, vermin on quarry. Same with targeting, quite easy if you're bench rested, put it on the bench rest, sit back, look at your screen, very nice, you like the sound effects, I'm hoping Google won't start putting ads on because I've used a sound effect they might be able to trace, sorry but it's a bug there with me that one, um, so anyway I'm better, I hope you was uh, happy enough with that, there's not an awful lot I can say about it really other than it's a, a lovely gun. I love my bull pups, I love my um, short rifles, takedowns and such like, so um, yeah, beautiful. Love it, love it to bits that one. Um, I think one of my next videos up will be um, machetes. Yeah, I think I'll do machete type. Uh, big knives next and um, I've noticed, uh, <laughs> what's I've noticed because I didn't really know where to look on YouTube to find out how many subs that I had but I've noticed that it's jumped up from something like 195 to 210 and since I did the VR to uh, Dell's videos at Dirty Room Knives. Uh, once again have a look on my uh, list of subs and sub as many people as you can on, on there uh, but I point out Dell at Dirty Room Knives, Andy at Doberman um, Mr Marshall a, aka Constructor and in fact go to gearbastion.com uh, log in and sub to as many custom knife makers as you can um, but you'll find all these people on the subs list, sub as many as you can, uh, there's some good people on there, same with the uh, wilderness and um, survivalists, I've picked up some good stuff in the last few months, uh, since I started looking at custom knife makers I've picked up an awful lot of stuff about um, grinding and um, with these, I've got a couple of blacksmiths on my uh, uh, friends list now and um, loads of stuff on there that's really simply laid out so that if you're suddenly uh, find your interest peaked these people are showing you the basics of how to start making knives or how to start uh, blacksmithing or how to be a good prep or how to put away um, a nice survival kit and so on. Most of all and you're probably fed up with me saying it, but if you come to view someone's page, you like what you're seeing, remember to give a thumb. Give a thumb, leave a comment, but definitely give a thumb because you're trying to get your genre, your interest list higher up so it becomes more popular, more easy to find, gets more people who you don't see normally because they're, you know, they're out there, they've only got 10 subs or whatever, they don't pop up on, on the video list because the, the person who has uh, 500 or 600 or whatever pops up before them. You get all that shoved up more into the general arena of where um, more people can view it. And instead of all these ads and silly, um, well they're not silly, no, because I do look at all sorts of stuff, but you know, um, you're getting your genre more popular, a popular market for you to see. Simple as. Uh, so that's it, that's uh, me for now and um, many thanks if you've viewed and great if you thumb and uh, like I said, look through your subs list and click on them people, go to gearbastion.com, um, join, 
sub, like everybody on the list, follow them on Facebook, follow them on YouTube, look out for, you know, all the good tips and stuff. So that's it from me for now. Catch you later. Be good.